This is Big Science Hard Talk. Welcome. What is important for an investor in a startup? How can a business or an idea attract investors? Dr. Cornelius Borsch is a German business angel with a record of over 400 invested companies worldwide. Dr. Cornelius Borsch, so Corny. The first question is, uh, what technologies and trends are you recently most excited about? Well, I'm investing for a long, long time. And as you can imagine, the topics are changing and uh, not everything is the flavor of the month. But of course, at the moment, you see a lot of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, you see a lot of topics around augmented uh, reality. But, you know, I have, my impression is always that we are, are very often our time uh, ahead. So that means that real technology is coming always takes much longer. And I'm focusing on artificial intelligence for a long time, but to tell you the truth, I don't know too many companies who are really doing it. So everybody talks about it, but the reality is it, it's not there. But what I'm focusing on is not so much just the technology trend uh, in general, but it is something which is new in some countries. So if you see a topic in the US already successful, and we don't, we don't have it yet in Europe, then this is of interest. Or the same if a topic is interesting in Europe, it, it has not been yet in the emerging markets. So I'm investing globally. And uh, so I'm very flexible on the technology. Can you explain a little bit more uh, closely what it is that you are exactly looking for in these tech investments? It is not so much about uh, technology. I mean, yes, I'm a tech investor, but um, it's not so much about the technology. It is um, more the team. Is it really an amazing entrepreneur who is running the show? Uh, what kind of other investors are on board? Are they really good in online marketing? Have, do they have experience in scaling companies? Um, do they really know their technology, etc.? So it's a whole spectrum of things which are necessary in order to be a successful entrepreneur. When you think about your investing career, has it changed the things that you focus on? Has it changed over time? Yeah, of course. I, I try to think out of the box. So I try to uh, innovate myself all the time. And you have to because uh, trends are uh, changing. If I would know up front what is really, uh, what, uh, how the future will look like, oh my God, that would be just so wonderful. So um, it is very difficult uh, because sometimes technologies come too early and there is no market yet. And sometimes technologies uh, you, you find too late. So if you read about a technology in the newspaper, you can be sure it is already too late. So you really have to look at new technologies all the time. I give you an example of like CRISPR or gene editing, uh, all those topics uh, I'm looking for the last couple of years in a, into them. But um, are they here yet in Europe? Not too many yet. Uh, but of course, it will be a, a, a big market. So yes, I'm changing all the time. I'm also changing the regions. I became uh, a big investor in Mexico, Colombia, and Chile. Uh, I started this six years ago. Ten, seven, eight, nine years ago, there was nothing. So uh, and now I'm focusing more on Japan because there is no startup culture, and I hope it will develop. The problem about Investing is you have to be already in a market when there is no market in order to be there when the market is coming. And that makes it so difficult. Finding, of course, good startups and good ideas and good technologies, it's very important. But what can a good investor or a business angel such as yourself bring to this kind of startup culture and startup companies? Well, I think the business angels especially play a very important role in this e ecosystem. Most of the entrepreneurs do not have the experience yet how to build uh, companies. And uh, if you have an experienced business angel, somebody who has done it a few times before, then it's much safer. It's, it is a little bit like flying an airplane. If you, are the, for the first time in an airplane, everything looks very, very complicated. And this is the same for a startup entrepreneur. But if you have done it a few hundred times, then it's much easier. You know what button you have to push and you know if some difficult turbulences are coming, what to do. And um, so um, I think the choice 
of who to pick as an investor is underestimated. So it's not about money. Actually, money is really not the, the, the most important topic. It is what kind of business angels you have at the beginning. In, in practice, how early do you get usually involved with a startup if you want to start growing it, bringing it forward? From A to Z, I mean, it really depends. Sometimes, uh, you know, I have invested in more than 400 companies by now, and I'm still a shareholder in roughly 200 companies. So actually, the last one, I, uh, I start um, tomorrow, um, and it's my, my idea. And so, you know, and I look for a team. And then um, it's just starting and I'm financing it completely. Uh, but usually I get involved very early um, or I go in a little bit later. Um, okay. That means um, if you go in very early, it's super risky. If you go in very late, then it's not so risky, but the valuations are high. So this is this compromise you have to do sometimes. And what, of course, I try. I try to go in as late as possible. So. To, to pick the proven winners, but have a, the valuation of the first round, but that doesn't always work. So valuation is key, of course. Yeah, so, so you, uh, you would prefer to have like all kinds of stages of businesses that you are involved with. Yeah, I think that is very important. Um, the truth about uh, founding companies is that even an internet company takes seven to eight years. A tech company takes usually 10 plus years. And um, and if you just invest in very, very early stage, it will take forever until you see any results. And um, so I took companies last year um, public. I invested 18 years ago. Uh, and this is some, something very painful for investors. If you, because you don't have steady cash flows with, you know, with uh, startups, either you lose your money or you make a, a very good return. And only, let's say, one or two out of those 10 companies really make a significant return. The truth is, again, that most of the companies are not, will not make it. Uh, and if they make it, very often it does not make a big difference. So it doesn't affect you personally if your investment doesn't show up as good as you expect? Oh, of course. I'm, I'm, I hate this um, because I want to be successful like anybody. And... Um, and I'm, you know, I'm investing every 10 days in a new company. So every time I invest, you can imagine I, I, I believe in this company. I look at 10 companies a day. And um, of course, most of the time I say no. And I think I get very qualified deal flow because I'm the most active European uh, tech investor. So I see almost any deal and I have lots of people who help me globally. I've, I'm in 10 offices. Uh, I have 10 offices worldwide. I have uh, in total 15 vehicles from which I invest, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm doing a lot, but um, again, you never, uh, you ne never know upfront if this is a good company or not. Um, you always find out uh, later. Well, yourself, you are located in Europe. Of course, your investments are global, but do you prefer or guide your investments more as worldwide or do you prefer to do them nationally? No, I'm, uh, I'm one of the few business angels who invest globally. So I, I invest in Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and I have been to all those countries, uh, I don't know, but many, many dozens of times. And um, yeah, and I have my local ecosystem there, so my offices and, uh, and uh, yes, of course, you, we have the tendency to invest nationally, but that is very dangerous if you just invest in Europe. The problem about Europe is we are very far behind uh, in comparison to the US and China. Um, I just wrote a book about it. It's called uh, Missed Future, uh, why Europe is so, so far behind because our investors are too conservative. The people who inherited money, they prefer to invest in real estate and in, in bonds instead of to give this money to entrepreneurs. To young entrepreneurs. Politicians, I mean, they have no clue anyhow, so no surprise. So they didn't know. Um, and so they did everything wrong. They supported agriculture and old technologies, but nothing which is now relevant for the future. So we as a society, have we have to think, how are we going to make money in the future? Because banks, insurances, and all this old stuff will disappear anyhow. So it doesn't make sense to support 
businesses which are not relevant in the future anymore.